Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Plane's Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Today, we're going to talk about compression checking. This is one method that works. So why do we check the compression on our airplane engines? Well, it's a good gross indication of a problem that might be developing in the cylinders. We could have a leaking exhaust or intake valve. We could have a leak blast past the rings. This is going to give us some indication of where we might be losing power. It's generally done when we do the annual inspection on airplanes. It's on the checklist for most annual inspections. But if you're suspecting some kind of a problem, it's a quick and easy diagnostic tool to get started digging into where you might see an issue with your engine. Doing the compression check isn't that hard. We take the cowl off, we pull some spark plugs, we put on an instrument, we do the numbers, and then we think about what they're telling us. So let's head on over to the airplane and get a compression check. All right, what we have here is a differential cylinder pressure tester, because what we're technically doing is a leak down test. We're not doing the same kind of compression check you do with a car engine, where you put on a gauge, crank it over with the starter, and see what pressure you can get. We can't really do that safely with an airplane engine because we get this big thing spinning out in front and I don't like to work with it when that's close and spinning. So we're actually going to measure the ability or the, the leak down across the pressurized uh, parts of the cylinder using this gauge. So we're going to put in an input pressure, we'll read it here, we'll go up to 80 psi, that's the standard that we use, and then we'll read the, the pressure on the downstream side of a calibrated orifice on this side, which is the number you, you, you always hear pilots talking about. My airplane was, was 78 over 80, I'm very proud, mine is 64 over 80, it's getting kind of worn out, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and, and use this to, 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 to essentially do what's called a leak down test. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to put our test spud in, and we've put that in here into our number one lower uh, spark plug hole. Um, we're going to do that one, and then we'll do go all the way around and do the rest of the engine, rest of the cylinders, but for now we'll start with cylinder number one. Um, and we have to make sure that we get cylinder number one to top dead center on the compression stroke. So to, to do that, an easy way is to have this in, have it plugged into our checker, have the valve open, and then we're going to go ahead and spin the prop until we see a little bump in that pressure. Okay. So we'll, we'll swing it around here. And there's our bump. So that's the compression stroke on number one. We're going to trip the impulse coupler, and then we're going to go back because we want to make sure that we get all of the, all of the um, rings coming up on the compression stroke in the right direction. And I'm looking at the top dead center indicator here on the back of the flywheel, and that needs to line up with this case split. So I think we're just about there. It's better to be just a little short, and then we'll go ahead and check it in front with our starter uh, indication, and we're right there. So we're in good shape. We want to make sure that our valve is off before we go ahead and connect our airline. We want to make sure that we always keep everybody clear of the prop because we're going to be putting a lot of air pressure into the cylinder and it'll swing that prop fast enough to really hurt somebody. Okay, We've now get that on. And we're going to turn the pressure. I like to turn it all the way down, the input pressure here, to zero, so that we're going to start this very controlled manner. Then we're going to open this valve. I'm going to keep one hand on the prop. That way I can tell if it's not dead on top dead center, it's going to either try and kick backwards or it's going to kick forwards. And I can feel that happening as I slowly add pressure. And we've now got 20 PSI on the inlet side, and the prop seems to be really nicely centered, so we seem to have that right on top dead center. And up we go, looking for 80 on the input side. And there's 80, and the output side is showing about 79, and that's about as good as we're going to get. Now, I don't ever like to leave it up there. Once I've taken the reading, I want to bleed that back down again. There's a lot of pressure on that prop, and we don't want to do anything dangerous. So there you have it. We've now seen that this cylinder has 79 over 80. We can take the spud out. We can put it in the next cylinder. We write these numbers down. We'll go and we'll test all, three, all four cylinders, and then we'll go back and we'll talk about what that means. 
See, that was actually pretty easy. What we came away with is a, is a set of numbers that tells us the health of that cylinder. As we were saying, it's gonna be something like 60 over 80, 70 over 80. These are the PSIs, this is the leak down rate. So with good numbers, we don't have anything else to worry about. But, and, 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 and what we were seeing here were good numbers. But let's say we were seeing something in the 60s. That's kinda of low, although Lycoming will tell you that as long as you see 60 or better, the engine's safe to fly. If it's below 60, they want you to look into what the problems are. So a quick way to tell where that, where that jug might be leaking is to listen for air. If you listen at the exhaust it's, and you hear air, it's coming out the exhaust valve. If you listen to the um, intake and you hear air there, it's coming out the intake valve. And if you listen at the oil dipstick, it's leaking through the rings. So this is the first quick thing you can do while you have the cylinder pressurized to see where that air might be leaking. So what do you do if you do have a leak? If it's one of the valves, very likely running the engine is going to uh, clear some debris and knock it loose. If it's the valves, or if it's the, the rings, they might seat a little bit differently once the engine gets warm and gets going. So what does Lycoming tell you to do? They say button up the engine, put the cowl back on, and go fly it for a couple hours. Check it again. If it's still not reading well, they're gonna tell you, button it up and go fly it some more. They never get you out of the do loop. Now the truth of the matter is, if you're seeing a really low number, something significantly below 60, you really wanna dig in to find out what, it, what, what the problem is. And, and the best thing to do is figure out where that leak is coming from by listening, and then go ahead and address the problem from there. So remember that doing a compression check is just one piece of the diagnostic puzzle. Uh, if the engine is burning some oil, hmm, and we have low compression, hmm, that's gonna tell us maybe we have a ring problem. Maybe, we did, maybe they're not seated, maybe we've gone and varnished a, a cylinder. So you wanna take a look at all of the indications to see where you might have problems. The compression check is one part of the diagnostic package. It's a good place to start. As we talked about when we were actually doing the compression check, I wanna emphasize again, make sure you recognize that there is danger around that propeller. Even though the plugs are out and the ignition is off, disconnected, when you're putting pressurized air into that jug, it can really swing that prop if it gets off top dead center. Well, let's reinforce that. Be cautious when you do this. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks to Tempest for sponsoring. And come back next time and watch more Kit Planes Firewall Forward. Thanks for... Ah. We gotta stop there because I can't get 80 PSI. <laughs>